How much money do you think you need to be spending per song to be considered a professional level artist? Not an upcoming artist. I'm talking about an established Grammy award winning level artist because we actually have a Grammy award winning artist that broke down how much they are spending on one single song. Exactly what it looks like. Every single line item. And we got some indie artists who did the exact same thing. When you see these numbers, you might realize I'm not spending enough. Or might realize that I don't even have that money to spend. But... This is going to give you an idea of where you should lay in this equation and help you figure out how you want to move with your career and how much money you can make off of it. This is another episode of No Labels Necessary. Check this out. Money Long dropped a bomb on IG. Miss Money Long. Miss Money Long. She's a Grammy Award winning artist. For those of y'all who do not know, Hours and Hours came out the gate. It's been maybe two years now since it first like hit and popped. But she's been writing for, you know, the goats of the industry for a while. A You're talking time. about Rihanna's, uh, what's the California King bed, songs like that, right? Wait, for real? You know him. Yeah, she wrote that. I did not know that. It, exactly. She's <laughs> one of those. That her pen is very, very strong. Oh, damn. Why right, shit? Exactly. Oh. So when she talks about how much money she's spending on music, right, she's spending it as an artist, by the way. Not like, oh, this is just... The, the more business savvy label and I don't care too much about my music so I'm going to just spend bare minimum but just someone who comfortably thinks and feels as an artist and wants to spend. I think that part's um, important because mm -hmm. there's artists who are on different sides where I'm just going to create and I'm going to own every part of the process. I might be the mix engineer, mastering engineer, the singer, <laughs> my, my, the writer, the co-writer, you know what I'm saying? Be my own manager and spend as little as possible. No, she's a traditional artist in, in that way where she stays in that artist bag for the most part. And she broke it down like this. $1,200 per 12-hour block minimum plus engineering fees. Oof. That's already out the gate a lot of money for artists. Oh, but maybe you got your own studio. Yeah, maybe you got an engineer that, that rock with you and, you know, do it for free. And this is the thing, right? <laughs> I think all this is going to have to be taken into account. Don't worry, we're going to get into the indie artist yeah. numbers as well. And, um, like the, an actual indie artist who broke his numbers now um, for a different part of the equation, though. <laughs> there's a certain level of quality, right? That's required in different genres. I want to say that out the gate, mm, right? Yeah. To be a top level R&B artist, we're talking about traditional technical quality. Yeah. You're not going to yeah. be able to like have horrible mixing. You know, you're not going to be able to come out like X did. Yeah, and yeah, then, that's, that's funny. You that's know exactly what I'm saying? What like, thinking about. And take over. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a thing. We have yet to see it. Is it impossible? You know, everything's possible, I guess, but different genres have that, those different yeah, requirements. It happen in our lifetime. Exactly. Yeah. So when you look, like, look at the level and the, and the quality, that's going to determine the, the level of equipment and or uh, fees that come along with competing at a certain level as well, especially when we're talking about Grammys. That should be taken into account when looking at her numbers. Five to thousand, $5,000 or $30,000 per production. 10K and up for established producers with quantifiable success. This is the good part right here. Like these extra notes that she made, I want y'all to hear that. All right. 10K and up for established producers with quantifiable success. Yeah, that's your, your Zaytovens, your Metro Boomin, yes. your, your, your Turbos, you know what I'm saying? These are the names. Yeah. Crazy. Right. People that they're a brand in and of themselves. Yeah. All right. So just letting you know, she's giving you a perspective. If you want to work with certain different type of people, that's what it's going to look like. Then she goes five hundred to seven point five thousand for mixing, higher rates for established mixers with access to specific equipment and sonic quality. Mm, that makes sense. We, this is where we get to it, right? Because if you're gonna have so to achieve a certain level of quality, you're gonna need certain equipment. Mm -hmm. Period. Right? Yep. It's no different than oh, I got a certain level camera. Oh, I got a red camera mm -hmm. versus I got my first starter Canon or something. Yeah. And those people. They're going to try to make their money back. So I got to charge higher fees because this is an investment to buy this equipment or to even get access to this equipment. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Who are we talking to that said, oh, Erko. Erko said that when we went to his studio. He was what did like, he say? He said something like, I can charge what I charge because I have like certain speakers and oh, yeah. boards and things that yeah. you're not going to see in the average studio. And yeah. Like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And, and best believe, I know a lot of y'all might think, ah, man, people are just finessing and things like that. The quality difference is very real. Yeah, 100%. It's very real. 
I was personally messed up <laughs> for a good minute. It was. Bro, I was very. <laughs> yeah, I was there. It was. I was very mad. I could not <laughs> consume music the same, or I was hurting by the low level of quality that I realized that I lacked in my music listening experience, bro. Like I get I get goosebumps just thinking back to it. We were listening to so Erico, shout out to Erico, man. Um if y'all don't know, he's mixed uh no um like a lot of people. Jay-Z, uh DMX, I Kanye. believe, Kanye. Yeah. So Travis, we were listening to um Praise God. Praise God. Yep. Off which album is that? Uh I almost said Life Pablo. Um Donda. Donda. So he mixed that album, right? We're listening to that. I've heard the song before. Yeah, great song. It's a good song. You know, that's <laughs> where you hear it there, the way it affects you emotionally. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's a whole nother. This is like, this is how music is supposed to be listened to. That shit just like hugged you. Bru- you know it, exactly. <laughs> I feel like I could just sit there, you know, and just chill and listen to music. Like, in the same way someone go listen on, on the, you know, in a little um, a hammock and chill outside and read a book. I could just sit in that studio, get a comfortable chair, and just listen to music. Yeah, bro. 100%. Yeah. Like, that's how crazy it was. So, point is, it's a huge difference. And he even talked about him being able to listen um, the level of quality of, of the level of the quality of his equipment allowed him to even mix faster mm-hmm. because he doesn't hear he he doesn't have to work through all these issues as much because sometimes you correct one thing and now you can hear all these other sounds and it's like it's, it's this entire noise and dirt that you have to work through now it's just crystal clear where the problems are so there's there's very real 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 things that get worked through when you pay for people with these equipment and I I suggest anybody. If you have the opportunity to go to a high quality studio, right? Maybe it might not be the best of the best, but just find something better than yours and then slowly work your way up the ladder. And it's going to be continuously like a journey. Like, okay, I need to, for the art of the music, like I need to try to continue to make this more consistent of of experience. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's when it's a difference between a a good sounding song and a song that's an experience. Hmm. Hmm. Cause that show as hell was experience. Mm, <laughs> yeah, that was a multi million dollar studio. Of his multi million dollar <laughs> studio. Um, mastering <laughs> five hundred dollars <laughs> to five k for mastering, depending on the number of songs needed. Right, which I think we all know, and we all know that there's tools like I'm not gonna shout anybody's particular out. Yeah, I know it. You know what I mean? There's automated tools. Yep. Right, that you can just throw your music in, $20, and AI will make it sound better for sure, right? And a lot of y'all, I suggest y'all use that, not try to pay somebody 500 to 5K until you start getting to that level you can justify it. Just no different than for the pod, some episodes we've used the free Adobe AI. You know Did what we? I'm saying? Yeah, we've used the Adobe AI. Oh, yeah, I remember that phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember now. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it still gets used sparingly if, if a mistake occurs. Uh, but... <laughs> But you know that's what that's what I compare it to one k to fifty k for a single album artwork depending on the quality of images you choose to produce including editing and graphics. Shout out to the graphic designers. Fifty k for album artwork. That shit is crazy, especially in today's age, right? So we're gonna go generally speaking the lower end of this because we know like ain't none of y'all paying that. Yeah. Right. Like, I want to know who is paying that. I would love to know. Well, you said a scenario that I think made sense. Talk about uh, that yeah. one. Yeah, I, I could see it being if you were working with like a culturally relevant artist and you wanted to buy one of their artworks to be your artwork. But at that point, you basically, it's like buying art. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like I own it and I can I get usage rights to it. So in that very specific scenario, I could see it. But I couldn't see an artist commissioning like a even like a really good graphic designer. I could be wrong, man. Graphic designers, don't come to me in the comments, man. I'm, I'm, I'm new to this, you know what I'm saying? I'm learning. I can't see an artist going to like a new no-name graphic designer and giving them 50K for it. I can't see that. It's hard to imagine someone paying $50,000 for single or album artwork to anyone that gets called a graphic designer. Facts. But, you know, I hate to, to, to bash y'all, man, but I've seen artists argue with graphic designers over two hundred dollar artwork. I've seen it. I've seen graphic designers get finessed over a hundred dollar cover. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. 50K? If you get to 
if you get to that level, people aren't calling you a graphic designer anymore. They're calling you an artist. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Like so, that's that's clear. I, a good example would be just to clarify on what you said. If I paid, I'm gonna say Basquiat because a lot of people know who Basquiat is, right? To make a custom work for me, mm-hmm. right? To be my album artwork. Yeah, like his time, there's a lot of value already associated with he's him. He's a part of the marketing Clear. at that point. Yeah, and he's a part of the marketing. That makes a lot more sense, right? Mm-hmm. The closest example I can think of off bat is obviously uh, Drake's cover. The um, Him the, the as a one? kid. Oh, that one. Okay, with yeah. the clouds. What album was that? Uh, nothing, nothing was the same. Nothing was the same? That was it? Okay. I suck at album names, so I didn't want to say it at first, but cool. That's a good example of it. We not paying that though. Like she says, one k on a low end. That one, I'm, I'm, I know for a fact. You know, people paying fifty dollars and using AI. Future didn't even want to pay it, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. Future went to Getty. <laughs> he got his most iconic right. <laughs> album artwork right. for probably twenty dollars. Shoot, Drake, Drake's post with the Holly Berry slime was more relevant than the actual single artwork. Oh yeah, you're so, right. That's true. Yeah. That was a Getty image too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I know our Getty wants to get paid five thousand dollars <laughs> to one hundred fifty thousand dollars for a music video. Now five thousand dollars is a consistent number I've heard and seen a lot of times for artists that I believe shouldn't be paying five thousand yeah. dollars. But you know, neither here nor there. Let's read her fine lines first. This only applies to actual videos with a concept and not store and storyline. Not standing in the middle of the street. Rapping and singing. So she's saying, y'all basic ad videos. I know y'all going to say y'all $200 or I, I'm cheaper than that. It was like, nah, we doing like big boy stuff over here. That's basically yeah. what she's saying. But e- even those videos probably going to be at least $1,500, 2 k You yeah. know what I'm saying? You can get some high quality yeah. standing in the middle of the street videos for like, yeah, like 2 k Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. If you're talking about with the camera cameras. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I would say, um, yeah, we've seen like 15K as a consistent for the ones that even got a little bit more concept for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you might find a buddy or somebody who's on their way up. So you catch them while they're low. That's always a thing. Yeah. But just normally being accessible, finding somebody who's already proven and you see a, a catalog that's established so you can trust them, you know, to help bring out the best in you because you don't have to direct every single idea to a T. They can hear your stuff and make it better or actually do what you see when you tell them. That's going to be this. Yeah, it and, really is. And the ones with a team, I think that's important to note. You know uh, what I'm saying? Because like, yeah. people don't think about that when you shoot a video. Like, There's possibly four or five other people, sometimes more. I, I've, I've heard rumors that like Lyrical Lemonade be having like 12 niggas on set. You know what I'm saying? They got to get fed. Yeah. They got to get there. You know what I'm saying? So like that that goes into some of these higher costs as well. It's like you you paying for the crew plus the storyboard and the quality, all that stuff. And then zero to unlimited in the marketing. <laughs> so we just going to leave it at that. Like zero to unlimited. We already know you could be completely organic, but if you're paying money, you gonna, you can you decide when you stop. There is no fixed cost mm-hmm. for the marketing. And visualizers are low key irrelevant. Just make a video with your phone if you're that unsure or your art of your art. Or if you don't have a large budget, don't spend money on this, in my opinion. Don't spend money on visualizers. I I, I think I agree with her with that. Cause what are we considering a visualizer? You know, like the little eight second loops with the music playing in the background, you know? Cause I, I see what she's saying. Like, cause if we're assuming that the 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 average decent graphic artist, decent to really good graphic artist. It's already, she lined it up, 1K to 50K for artwork. They probably charging at least 500 to two to 3K per visualizer. You know, let's let's assume it's a bundle deal. I get the artwork and some visualizers because I already got the, the files for the artwork. That's a lot when I know I could just go whip out my iPhone 15 and some make a cool little eight second loop. And then that that'll do just as good okay. in most cases. So I, I kinda I kinda feel her. I kinda if see what That's she's what from. we're talking about, yes. But I've seen some dope visualizers where let's just say it's a photo shoot that's moving, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's enough aesthetic that's set, right? It's intentional. It's just not, oh, I'm in some random location outside yeah. and then I'm just recording off the phone. But I I I think it's valuable for your branding if you do have like a a significant POV on what your brand should look like. Yeah. To do a short visualizer. Like again, 
It doesn't have to be expensive, though. Like, I think you can get those off for free or $200 or less with the right person because you are only trying to basically catch a shot and take it in for, like you said, eight seconds, maybe record 30 or to a minute just to have more content to work with. Yeah. But, yeah, I've seen some dope loops, though, where I'm like, all right, this actually adds to the video. I think the problem is most people aren't with the image that they capture. It's not It's not worth it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, too, I mean, I guess even kind of coming from maybe where she's coming from with the money, I think in some instances it would make more sense to pay for the visualizers than the video. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like I, I, I could spend, you know, to her point, 5 K to 150K for a video, or I could spend 500 to 5K on a visualizer. And, you know, we already know that most consumer audiences are paying more attention to short form content anyway. So it's like, hey, if I just need something to just, you know, help me pad the numbers or get a little extra boost in the YouTube algorithm, or, or to your point, have a little bit more content to post, yeah, I'm, I'm going the visualizer over music video route. And if yep. we're assuming that, we're going to hypothetically do all of it, then y'all feel her. I right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, she's probably doing all of it. Yeah, exactly. Now, again, on the high end, her her budget is going to $242,500 for one song. Yeah. And she, her whole point was, like, this is why it's so hard to make money back. Yeah. That's why she dropped it, right? This is just for one song. Now imagine an album with 18 songs on it, even 10 songs, if you want to operate at a level consistent with major label support. Do the math required from the perspective of the artist. It's challenging to deliver the vision at the level you see it in your mind if you don't have the resources. From the perspective of the financiers, it would be foolish to spend money where you don't have a clear picture of how you're going to get that money back. We can do a whole episode on that. <laughs> Let's take this, put it to the side, and then mention a couple other things. Cardi B said she was paying like six hundred thousand dollars a show for her show, um, her show production, right? Her set production. Mm -hmm. So you think, oh, she's getting paid this much for a show? It's like, eh, she's really getting paid this much to put on a show, yeah, right? Yeah, and that not crazy, making that yeah. money back, right? <laughs> so, of course. If you're performing at that level, you're doing it that way because you got to maintain brand. That's the only reason you want to do it. All right. Of course, you got the art. Well, you also have the artist side. I have my artistic vision, but then I also have a brand that I have to stay consistent with. And I need it to be a certain level of lit. I need a certain level of reliability, which means I can't pay the cheap person that you, everybody like, oh, I could just get a nigga for, that, for this amount of money. Yeah, you can. But if you're in business long enough, you'll start to understand why people don't just get old bruh with mm -hmm. who's only for two hundred dollars five hundred dollars a thousand dollars or whatever right reliability becomes huge expertise becomes huge and even more meaningful when the stakes right raise right but starting off you know cut the corners that you can or move with the budget you have taking that to the indie side then you have the russell Talking about these shows, and this is an old post. We talked about it before, but I just, it was a great time to bring this back. On February 26th, all right, and on February 25th, 2003, he had a couple shows. One in Seattle, he made $8,176. One in Portland, he made $8,652 for a total of $16,829.40. All right. All right. All right. Great numbers. That sounds great. Y'all would love to make that for two nights as an artist, right? Well, let's cut to the chase. Collectively, the venues out of that $18,000 cost $4,800. Then he had to pay for the staff, all right? The flights to get there. He doesn't live in these cities. And collectively, his expenses added up to $16,722.99. Just in case you forgot how much money he made. $100 more than that. $106 more than that. All right. He netted $106.41 on these two shows before his profit split with the entities. ENTL is a promotion company, I believe, yeah. in this case. $53 per person. Now, why would you want to do this to yourself? Why would a business want to break even is a better question, right? 
Because that's what you have to look at yourself as a business. Promotion. One, promotion. Yeah, promotion. Promotion. Like the business side, the, the ENT legends, they get to say they had La Russell, mm -hmm. right? They helped him put on his shows. That's a part of their growth, right? When they start pitching other people, because the other people are going to say, oh, man, yeah, they, they brought La Russell to the city. So one, they know that they're trustworthy to bring other people to the city, and then other artists are more willing to work with them. Great for their business long term. Now, La Russell, why would he want to do it on the artist side? Again, promotion but what is his promotion requirements or, or benefits one just to show he's active he's out there getting shows and doing shows yep all right if you talk to a manager they're always going to be talking about the hard tickets right yep. gotta and prove we're selling tickets established that we can actually sell some tickets yep right but this is all an investment breaking even in the meantime to hopefully make more money in the future right yep. that's all it comes down to yeah, and I, I would say too with La Russell's model specifically, he he probably made some money off of merch, you know, good amount of money off of merch. He's he's very reliant on merch, and then he's big on content. To so see your point, he probably as long as I get this shit documented, and I can get this to be a twenty k, fifty k view video that makes other motherfuckers want to come to a future show or you know his uh pagola show in his yeah, backyard. In his backyard yeah. where, the, where the expenses are lower because mm -hmm. it's my house. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So I, I could I could see artists like him being like, yeah, this is. Because break even is great. We talked about it on a really old episode. I don't remember what artist we were talking about. Um, yeah. I can't think of the girl that was talking about the production costs and moving the set around. Where, you know, we were like, bro, put a tour on, uh, let alone, uh, you know, some, a couple of shows like this. Like, you damn near lucky to break even. Breaking even is good. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very hard. Yeah, very even. hard, bro. Like, like off of, and that. off of just the shows, we're not even talking about like whatever the merch profits. Um, you know how they kind of cover this stuff. So, like, all in all, I would say like breaking even and up is the win. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Losing, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if he had lost like a couple hundred dollars on this, because of like those, you know, seemingly tangible long term benefits, we could still call that a win. You know, like he let's say like worst case he had lost like a thousand dollars or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just going through this whole process, then it's like okay, you got a thousand dollars to go touch the people, sell some merch, collect some ticket data. You know what I'm saying? Get some content. Um, and then, you know, show your team that we moving forward. And I said, that's a, that's a, that's a good thousand yeah. dollars spent. Let people feel the progress <laughs> and momentum. That's a real thing. Yeah, exactly. He got totally $1,500 in marketing expenses that he put up here. Those are ads, by the way. $720 on the Seattle ads and $834 on the Portland ads. He's targeting those specific areas. I assume when he's about to do the show, that money would have been a lot more if his content game wasn't so strong. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people were at each show, but if it took just knowing what I know from running ads, selling out shows, all that stuff, if he spent $834, he it, without content to get the number that he wanted to, that actually came out, I would not be surprised if it cost at least $5,000. Yeah. Can you go back up and see how that's, many, that's many a, tickets he said he sold? Yeah. That he got on here? Oh, let's see. So 453. Oh, there we go. Yeah. We yeah, can't 453 do for Seattle. I mean, he said the average ticket cost was 18. So let's assume he was getting 10 to, it was costing him 10 to $15 a ticket sale from an ad perspective. Then that would be what, like 720. I don't I feel like doing, I hate doing math live, man. Niggas be calling us out. <laughs> nah, on our math, you know what I'm saying? EJ could do the edit, man. Yeah, so even, even even if he was, let's say he was doing 10 to $15 a, a sale, that means like roughly 70 to 90-ish tickets would have came from the ads. And then the rest would have came to your point from probably content, word of mouth, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So how, how many tickets is, is it total? That's what I want to see. Uh, Seattle was 453. 453? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if we assume like that, we assuming he doing ten to fifteen a sale. You know what I'm saying from the ads, it's costing him ten to fifteen to get one ticket sale. Then yeah, like even in that case, seventy to like a little under hundred tickets would have came from the ads. So shit, to your point, yeah, that's crazy. Like that's you know more than seventy five percent of the tickets being sold through content and word of mouth. Which content, is crazy. word of mouth, and also Russell's done a great job at collecting. 
phone numbers and emails. Yeah, all that stuff too. Yeah, getting phone numbers is still the number one way when it comes to shows. If you want to sell out, you got to get people's phone numbers. Now, with this being said, one dope that La Russell put these numbers out here on the indie mm-hmm. sale. Now, if you go look at his numbers, his numbers are public in terms of his followers on Instagram. At this time, he was, you know, of course, smaller than what he is today, but they're not majorly different right now than when they were earlier this year. Yeah. Like, so you can go look at his Instagram, you can go look at his uh, Spotify, right? And get a, a real get a real vibe of what it looks like. Matter of fact, let's just look it up. Let's talk about the fact that most artists fail to understand that it doesn't take forever to monetize your audience. We had an artist literally begin to take off and make $20,000 from his brand new audience in the same month. But how is that possible? It's because we're in a new era, baby. Yes, you wanna continue to build a relationship over time, but the first time you make money from your audience can happen today if you understand the new age music marketing funnel for artists. So if you wanna hear about this approach and how you can apply it to yourself, I made a completely free video to watch at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You gotta make sure you put the www, or if you're on YouTube, you can find the link in the description and check out how we help monetize artists for completely free. I promise I promise it'll completely change how you see things. Currently, this number is imperfect because it might change. You know, might have just went up for whatever reason. But three hundred and seventeen thousand monthly listeners. All right, and then if you go look at his IG, he's probably somewhere around like seven hundred fifty-eight hundred thousand. Now he's at nine hundred seventy-five k though. I ain't realized he almost to a milli. Oh shit, man! Shout yeah. out to Russell. Shout out to Russell, bro. Shout out to Russell. So with this being said, you're seeing these numbers with somebody who was killing it on social media, mm-hmm. which goes back to um, Money Loan's point, though, the difficulty of making music and then profiting from that music. La Russell is running really lean, really smart, really indie. He's not spending these numbers on his music. I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. Like, he's not spending 240000 per track. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the the high ends of her estimate. Probably not even the low end if we just added up all the low ends of her numbers. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually a really great point about his situation. I think when we talk to him, a lot of those pieces to the puzzle he has in house. Yes. And that was the big point where I'm like, all right. And when I said money loans, like the traditional artist mm-hmm. artists, not an entrepreneur artist, because some I think, you know, I don't want to go into a whole topic because this, I feel like it should be a be a whole topic and thing that, that gets talked about. A lot of times there's these really entrepreneurial artists that give all this inspiration to artists that are not the same animal as them. Preach, brother. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I get what you're saying. You can do X, Y, and Z. And artists that is not that artist, I understand why you're inspired by them. But if you look at everything that they do, and their, their moment of hustle, their way of looking at business, y'all actually don't look the same. Mm-mm. And if you peel back the layers, it's it sounds very much so like some of the executives that you don't like how they sound. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but you're not mm-hmm. assuming you're not consuming it the same because it's an executive. You just got an artist saying it, and <laughs> you're like, oh, that sounds amazing. That's inspirational. But their minds, the way they're doing what they're doing, the numbers they're doing is because it's a little bit more business then you would be comfortable with some of y'all. Yeah, and if you need proof, go look at the comments on this video. I, I, I guarantee you it's going to be somebody going to say 240K for a song, that's ridiculous. Somebody going to come back, comment back and say, no, nah, brother, just mix your own songs and learn graphic design and cut your costs down. That artist going to respond back, but an artist shouldn't have to do all that. We should just be allowed to make the music and there go your proof. I swear to God, scroll through the comments. I bet y'all going to see it. <laughs> and this is and this is the spectrum that you have to decide where you want to fall. Between, exactly. Right? How far leaning are you gonna be on the artist side without any business? How far are you gonna be on the business side? And how much of the art are you willing to give up? Because undoubtedly, it's proven throughout time, it's very hard to be in full blown creative mode and full blown business mode. Mm-hmm. All right, especially when you're coming up and have minimal resources because Money Long touched on it. Like, you know, um, what did she say? 
She says something about your creative vision. From the perspective of the artist, it's challenging to deliver the vision at the level you see it in your mind if you don't have the resources, right? So we're not talking about a Kanye who has hella resources right now. And as an artist, if you're constantly growing your vision, you'll hear Kanye still be like, I don't have enough money to do what I want to do, right? So you have that challenge and that's the artist's face. And, like, and, and I actually told the artist this. Even if you have to start off with more of a business acumen side or if you're an artist and have to submit to the level of business that you can currently do, that's cool because if you're a real artist, in my opinion, the business will never be able to catch up to your vision. Mm-hmm. Like you're always, you, you're going to do more, you're going to see more and you're going to be a bigger and bigger vision or just different things that you will want to do. Right? And it's very hard to actualize exactly how you saw things in your head because mm-hmm. a lot of times technology don't even exist or the amount of people that might require. So there's always going to be restrictions at one point or another. Yeah, that's the thing too, man. You know, I'm going to you know, uh, give a little support to the not so creative artists because they catch a lot of flack. But, you know, they might just be counting pennies and be like, man, you know, sometimes to your point, vision is costly. Yeah, you know, people don't talk about that, bro. Vision is costly, <laughs> and sometimes having no vision will save you a couple of dollars, bro. You keep it simple, you keep it light. You know what I'm saying? To my lawn's point, you go sing in the middle of the street. You know what I'm saying? We've been saying them. Uh, what's that? What's that platform called? Um, it's not off the radar, but the platform where they just be rapping in the middle of the street with the yeah. mic hanging down, bro. Them shit's yeah. going viral. It's not the, the most creative idea, yeah. But that shit go, and I think it's important as an artist, especially looking at these numbers, to also understand when do I turn on my super creative brain and I go all out in my creativity and then when do I possibly tone it down a little bit so I can afford to get to that next big creative idea Mm. you know yeah and I say artists I love y'all because I love people and artists are also people but with (laughs) they are people with that reminder (laughs) with that reminder it's a people problem, not an artist problem. I think we box things in, and artists sometimes look at the music industry in a negative way, um, and then allow that to put to make them feel impressed and put them in this rut and make them feel like they have this unique problem where this money is creating this issue. But ultimately, you're just going through the fight to experience your artistic freedom. Yeah, that's All a right? great, that's a that's a great point because it's they think it's a money issue. And what it really is, is this is an industry where everybody really values their skill set. So you look at numbers like this, and someone might go like, man, 7K for mixing is crazy. Set it to a mixing engineer yeah. that's been working on his craft for 20, mm. 30, 40 years. Yeah. You know, I, I, I brought the point, I thought like 50K for a cover would be crazy. But Let's I, talk I, about artists devaluing <laughs> artists. Oh man, hey, man, it's a couple. Mixing is an art, baby. Pro- yeah. pro- producing is an art. All of it is, yeah. Every yeah. every aspect of this is art in a sense. The yes. marketing is art. The production is art. The mixing is art. Actually, that's actually a great point. All of these are the more artistic sides of the art. Re-record the whole episode and, <laughs> and really <laughs> call it, it out. Because somebody start looking yeah. at the marketing costs and be like, "Man, shit, crazy." I jump up my seat and start making some points. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can assume that every position on here would make a similar case if an artist was like, "No, nah, mm-hmm. this is this is too much. This is yeah. crazy." And so that's the ooh, that's ooh, the ooh. and every one of these people can get in their bag, including uh, great marketers. In the same way, you artists will complain about pop artists, and when I say pop, I mean like popular or viral artists, mm-hmm. right? Having an audience that doesn't understand the real shit. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I the audience, this, yeah. oh man, y'all don't appreciate the real music like mine. Y'all like the basic stuff. The engineer be like, oh man, yeah, you only paying for that because you don't appreciate the real good stuff. I hear all the BS and issues mm-hmm. in this. Everybody can do that. It's like you don't know what got missed, yeah. right? So everybody, when you're not in your own bag, you're going to miss it and have some level of ignorance. But again, too, you're fighting for your level of freedom. Um, and what for your creative vision of art and life? That's what everybody's doing. Yeah, the whole industry is going doing. Not even just the industry, bro. Oh, you mean like literally people in general? <laughs> that's what people are doing. 
Everybody like would like to work like the, the, <laughs> I'm not making the money that I want to make, and I want to make more money. And why do I want to make it? Because I want to be able to live in this free uh like in, in this space. That's the life that I want to live. It's the same version. Like uh, you know the 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 life we design is an artwork in itself. And artists, I think. I don't know. I think I'm just getting growing more and more tired of the victimization mentality. We we uh that get I don't even say we, but they gets pushed uh, on artists. Us. Yeah, not us. <laughs> but like it gets pushed on artists so much and there is a there's a fine line between empathy and what's the word I'm looking for? Mm, bullshit? No. Nah disempowering mm, okay like you can tell somebody something you could be empathetic that somebody might have a harder reality right of what they're going through like the the, the circumstance you can have empathy for somebody's circumstances right you can also speak on to make somebody aware of their circumstances if they aren't fully aware of all the, the issues of their circumstances and obstacles however if it gets repeated and programmed into them, right? At some point, you disempower them because you're making their obstacles bigger than they are, right? Just the vision, the focus. It's like a rock being close, and now you're bringing that shit right to my face, mm. right? And now it becomes a bigger block because mentally, I'm thinking about this versus how to get around it or like just being free in thought in general. So some people don't see the obstacles and that becomes their advantage because they're just ignorant. You talk about the yeah. blissful ignorance of the youth sometimes or just somebody who's coming from the outside and they changed the game because they weren't in the game and aware of the problems. So like we program and everybody's like, everybody's evil, everybody's evil, artists are broke, artists are broke, everybody's trying to take money from artists and like, like it just, it just, I don't know, man. That, yeah, that nah, should get on my nerves. No, nah, I agree, man. Because it's like, you know, with us being on the marketing side, which marketing a lot of times is one of the more expensive cost of, you know, song promotion or just putting the song out in general. We would see that, right? And I what I learned that there will be some artists who will see, let's just say like our cost. They will see it and to them there will be just this this wall that they feel like was insurmountable. Like I'm I'm never getting over mm -hmm. this 2K, this 3K, whatever. And then you could see some artists be like, okay, that's how much it costs. I ain't got it, but at least I know the number now. I know I know how big the wall mm -hmm. is and how high I got to climb. Yep. And you know, I've been saying this for a long time, man. Like one of my favorite things to do in the music industry is to break the rose tinted glasses of artists. I've been saying it for a long time. Anybody that's ever talked to me one on one, you've heard me say it. And this is probably one of my favorite episodes because I can only imagine how many glasses just psh, shattered <laughs> shit from the intro for real. Matter of fact, if your rose tinted glasses broke. Drop the, the googly eye emoji in the comments, man. Let me see how many motherfuckers. You know what I'm talking The spiral eye emoji with the like, it's like the start, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, look dizzy and shit. Yeah. Um, but that tells you a lot about an artist and sometimes tells you a lot about, like I don't know, looking back on clients that I see now that are successful and I think about earlier conversations with them when they were smaller and had less resources, they were always like that type of artist. Like they would hear a number and instead of letting it discourage them, they'd be like, oh, this is gonna cost me 50K to do? Cool, at least I got the number and I know how high I need to shoot. Versus to your point, getting all in their feelings about it or shit, maybe not even having the information and being at a disadvantage because you don't realistically know how much it costs to get yeah. certain things done, you know? So there are artists out there who let these numbers discourage them and take themselves out of the race. And there are some artists who just see this as like a game and it's like, cool, now I know what I need to do. Thank you for letting me know how high the wall is. You know, now I know that I can't just climb this shit on my hands. I need to go get some pickaxes and some ropes and all that shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. <laughs> Beautifully said. That's a perfect place to end it. This is yet another episode of Another It Was Necessary. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.